Hello, welcome back to the channel. If you're looking to make a simple, effortless backswing, you're in the right place. I think since golf has been a game that we've been trying to get better at, people have been struggling with their backswing. This kind of holy grail of if I get it right at the top, then I'm going to be able to hit the golf ball better. And most certainly getting it right at the top is going to help you to hit the golf ball better, but it's not going to be a guarantee. In fact, you're going to see more differences in professional backswings than any other part of their golf swing. So really there isn't an absolute fail safe tried and tested thing that you've got to be doing. What I do want you to try and avoid, however, is kind of taking the backswing apart into thousands of separate pieces and trying to get into half a dozen different positions in order to get the club to the top of the backswing. Really, it's not that complicated. So today I want to try and show you a kind of a relatively simple and effortless, effort, effortless, effortless way to get to the top of your backswing. Um, whilst at the same time really understanding the two main kind of building blocks of it. Once you've actually understood that there is a swing plane which is basically given by the club, the angle that the club actually sits on the ground in the address position should basically determine the angle that you are going to then turn your shoulders in at, at, uh, in the backswing. And that's going to be a combination of hip rotation and shoulder rotation. It's going to be helped by a spine angle of around about 100 degrees to the original plane. And then this kind of side bend that we get our shoulders into is going to get the shoulders on plane. Unfortunately, just turning the shoulders on plane isn't going to give you a perfect backswing although it's going to do an awful lot to help because your arms are attached to your shoulders. So the shoulders moving in this angle is going to help the arms up on this angle if you let them, but the arms are going to have to do some work as well. And exactly where you can get to at the top of this backswing is really going to determine how easy the backswing is. And that really has an awful lot to do with your own physiology. Are you actually capable of getting into a perfect backswing? Now, this is a nice little trick that one of my colleagues, Stefan, has actually shown me that he uses with his students, and I thought I would pass it on to you. What he actually does is he just gets them to hold um, a, an alignment stick across their chest so that more is pointing out on the trail side. And then basically by hanging his trail hand here on the stick, and rotating, you can more or less see where you want to be getting to at the top of your backswing. And if you are finding that you haven't got enough extension, you haven't got enough mobility in your trail shoulder to get there, then you're going to have to actually accept that and try and get as close as possible as you can to this position. But what we're really looking for is for your trail hand to be more or less an extension of your shoulders at the top of your backswing, with your trail elbow bent and your trail wrist bent back. This is what I've called the, the uh, waiter in the past, although obviously they're a bit of a crap waiter because everything would fall on the floor because of the spine angle. But it's a kind of a picture that everybody seems to be able to deal with. So if you think of this kind of exercise, get your hand up here and get yourself rotating. You can see if you've got a mirror or a camera there, more or less where you want your trail hand at the top of the backswing. I think we all know by now that the lead arm should be relatively straight when we get there. So the lead arm is going to also govern how far away your trail arm, arm and hand should be from your trail shoulder. So you can't really bend it as much as you like to get it there. You can only bend it as much as the lead arm allows. And usually you're going to find an awful lot of tension at this position. Now, I think you can probably all agree with me that this isn't a bad position to be in at the top of my backswing. I've got the um, shoulders down on plane. I've got the arm up and extension of the shoulders. Gets a bit trickier when I'm trying to do this at the same time. Arms up and 
shoulder down because that is in itself a contradiction. The rotating of the left shoulder down while lifting the arms will obviously either cause my shoulder to come up or my arms to stay down. And it's this kind of inability to juggle the two movements which makes it so difficult. So what we're trying to do when we start the backswing is to get the shoulders rotating and the arms lifting immediately. If you wanted to kind of put a timing on this, I would use the shoulders as the governing rule. How quickly can you turn the shoulders to this position? How quickly do you want to turn your shoulders into this position? And the time it takes for your left shoulder, or for me, the left shoulder, for you, your lead shoulder, to get down virtually at a, an angle to the golf ball is the time that you have to lift both of your arms up into this position at the top. Now, a lot of you are actually wondering, well, is that all there is to it? Yes, that's all there is to it. Um, so why have you been struggling with keeping the club on path? Some of you are lifting it up, some of you are pulling it back too early. Well, really, that's exactly what we're talking about, the timing of the lifting and the rotating at the same time, and the timing of the bending of both the trail elbow and the trail wrist. So what we will often see, and you can probably see it better if I just put a club on the ground, is people who are lifting their arms before they start turning the body. They will then be kind of moving the thing on an outward plane, which if they then uh, start to hinge could get them kind of laid off at the top. Others are actually turning their body before they start lifting their arms, something which I am uh, sometimes, unfortunately, one of my mistakes. Um, the perfect guy is obviously turning and lifting at the same time. And that is basically getting them into the perfect position and giving them this kind of classic kind of up and down plane for their arms and their club. But basically what you're trying to do is to time these two movements. Don't get the wrist hinging too early. Don't get the elbow hinging too early. Both will take it flat. Don't get the lead arm lifting too early. That will tend to take it outside the line. But when we're talking about lines again, try and forget them. There aren't any lines in a golf swing, really. And as in nature, everything is is all about curves. So you don't need and want to be pushing your club back on a straight line away from the ball. You are turning your shoulders down, creating an axis. You are lifting your arms up. So the club is going to be pulled around a curve on the way in the backswing, even if it can look like a straight line for a very short time at the beginning of the backswing. You are turning the shoulder down, picking the arms up. And what's helpful is sticking a tour stick in the ground at the angle of your golf club, as you can see here, and you'll get some pretty effective um, feedback about whether you have hinged too quickly or picked up too early, simply by the position of the tour stick. You want to be basically having the arms and hands slightly above the tour stick by the time you get to around about hip height. By that time, your trail arm should also not, not be totally straight. It should be starting to bend, whereas your trail wrist is still pretty straight. As you get to around about chest height though, there is both hinging in the trail wrist and the elbow. And obviously this is completed by the top of your swing. The top of your swing, however, can be dependent obviously on the depth of your chest, the width of your upper arms, how deep your chin is and your overall flexibility. So there isn't really a one rule for that at all. But what we're really talking about is just timing these movements. What you can also see is if I were to 
turn my shoulders and just lift my arm up, my lead arm would be pointing more out towards the camera, whereas my trail arm is more back over the trail shoulder. So the lead arm is going to have to go back to the trail arm rather than the trail arm come forward to the lead arm. I want this extension of my shoulder playing to my trail hand uh, in the backswing. And the trick there, as we said with the original exercise, is where exactly do I want them to get to? Once I've actually got that, it's really just a case of drilling that into my feeling. Every time I take the club back, the shoulder down, the arms up, the shoulder down, the arms up, the shoulder down, the arms up. Now, if I were to hit a golf ball like that, you can actually see I catch this a little bit early because my arms, my trail arm especially, doesn't keep its length at the uh, or, or bent at exactly the perfect position. Am I worried about it? Not particularly. In truth, when you see me at the top of the backswing, I'm actually in a pretty good position there. And that's really what it's all about. So if you are somebody who has the arms a little bit on the inside and comes down a little bit steeper, or takes the arms a little on the outside and comes down a little bit flatter, I wouldn't worry about it too much. However, drilling the arms on a regular basis is going to drill a more consistent movement into your body. And obviously this consistency will help with the timing. The timing will help you to hit the golf ball better. But obviously getting to the most simple position you can at the top of the golf swing is gonna make the way back to the golf ball a lot easier. Try not to overcomplicate it try to keep it simple, try to repeat the movements as often as you can until it's in your muscle memory and you'll be playing better golf in no time. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done already. Big, big thank you to all my patrons. If you would like to uh, support the channel, I shall leave a link below. Otherwise, I wish you all a very nice summer. Enjoy it, we'll see you soon, bye-bye.